Hello and welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Uh, today we're going to take a look at Photoshop and uh, this is one of our first episodes for the new school year, um, the 2014-2015 school year and this is for my multimedia tech class that I offer at Milton High School. Uh, at any rate we're going to look at some of the uh, beginning things that people like to use Photoshop for. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I've already grabbed a couple of pictures um, off the internet here, and uh, they were good sized pictures, well over a thousand pixels, um, which is going to make it easy for me to work with. Um, they're on my desktop presently, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to get those into Photoshop. So starting with some of the basics here of just how to open an image in there, um, there's a number of different routes that we can go. Um, the first one is once I've got it on my desktop, I can actually grab the image, and I can drag it over onto the Photoshop icon in my dock. And it opens it up. There's another route that we can go. When we're in Photoshop already, we can go to File, we can go to Open, and then we can locate that particular file on our desktop. And it was the History of Liberty and Open. That's yet another way. And then the last way that we can go ahead and open up this image is you can right click on the image and you can go open with and you can pick out whatever program you want to open it with. In this case it's Photoshop. If Photoshop isn't showing up here um, you can go to other and then you can locate it in the applications. Um, we should be all set though with Photoshop and we click that and there it is. All right. One of the first skills that people like to learn in Photoshop is how to cut out a background. Um, whether it's taking somebody's face and moving it over to another body, or just taking out an image and moving it over to a completely different location, one that suits your needs, um, that's what we can do here. Uh, to start with, um, a little bit of uh, Photoshop. Over on the left-hand side, um, if you are under the Essentials view. There's a number of different views in Photoshop. You've got the essentials, which gives you your tools. You've got the design setup, which locks everything way over to the edges because they're assuming you're probably a graphic artist and you're working with some big spaces here. You've got the painting one, which brings out a number of different tools. Photography, which focuses on the stuff you'd need for that. And then 3D and so on. We're just going to work with the essentials right now. And I've got my toolbars all set up here. If you're not seeing some of these toolbars, or if you accidentally make any of your toolbars disappear at any time, you can always bring them back by going up to Window. And up here you can see the things that are checked off. Those are what are presently showing up. So if I accidentally get rid of like my toolbars or something like that, um, I can bring those back up with, uh, let's see here. I've got the adjustments. Um, there are tools somewhere in here. Tool presets, no, tools, here they are. We've got our tools. So, see they disappear if that ever happens. And I've had a few people accidentally close out their tool palette, and that's how you can bring that back. All right, over here, right now, we're looking at our layer palette, and it's showing us that we have one layer in there, and that that layer consequently is locked. Uh, we won't be able to do a whole lot with a locked image, so we're going to go ahead and unlock it. And we're just going to double click on the, uh, on the layer over here. And I'm going to click OK, unless I want to name the layer like Statue or Liberty or anything like that. Click OK. All right, and Lady Liberty is free. And um, here we go. Um, now that we've got an unlocked layer, we're going to go ahead and uh, extract Lady Liberty out of this image here, or at least get her selected so that she's ready to be put onto another background. Okay, the um, first tool that we're going to use is what we call the Quick Selection Tool. It's over in our tool palette here, and we're looking at the fourth tool down. Now, there are a number of different tools, especially on the ones that have the little uh, triangle down in the corner here. That tells me that there's more tools underneath. So if I hold my button down on there, you can see there's also a magic wand and the quick selection tool. Okay. For our purposes, quick selection tool, I go ahead and pick that up. Now right now, if I mouse over the image, you can see this is my brush size. Okay. If I want to change my brush size, a really quick and easy way to do it is to go ahead and hit the, uh, the right bracket and that'll blow this up here so that it's a little bit easier to work with. And then I can shrink it down with the left bracket so when I get into little tiny areas, I can use it there. 
Up in the upper left hand setting, whenever you click on a tool, these are the settings for that particular tool that show up. Right now it's saying that it's going to make selections for me because it's got the plus sign. Here is actually the kind of brush that I've got and the size of it. So if I also want to adjust the size here, you can see there it is there and there's a much smaller brush. Okay. I can adjust the hardness and the spacing and a number of other things here, which later will come into play with some of the other tools. For now, we just go ahead and get the size up here, and we're going to select Lady Liberty here. Let's start over in the corner. This should be a rather easy one to select because it's a solid background for the most part, and she is in contrast to that background, which makes it easy to pick out the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. I just start clicking on her, and I'm holding the button down, and I'm just dragging right over her, making sure that the entire time I don't touch any of that blue background. Okay? And we'll get all the edges all the way out here. You can stop clicking at any time, and then you can click in a new area, and it'll just add that stuff on here. And Photoshop CS5 is rather intuitive, and CS6 is even more improved on this feature. It's really good at finding the edges. Let's go ahead and shrink my brush size down here, grab that, and grab her other spike here. And it's being more selective here. So we just run this right out to the edge, making sure we get all of it. Perfect. Okay, we'll go ahead and grab these. And there's a little area over here that's not quite selected yet, but we just keep going around and refining our selection and shrinking the brush size down as needed. And we just keep getting these things all taken care of here. There we go. We're starting to get close here on the edges. It's starting to grab a little bit of that blue, which we can fix later. We do want to make sure that we just get the tips there so we're not losing those and get that one too. All right, so I think take a quick check. We've got a little extra blue that's selected that shouldn't be. Um, this is where we can use a different feature of the uh, selection tool. And at this time, um, we can actually use the minus sign. I'm just grabbing this really quick and grabbing that and that and just refining that edge there perfect oops i accidentally grabbed some blue not to worry let's show you how this works i can grab the minus sign now or i can hold alt and it switches back and forth between the brushes so with that um, i go ahead and blow my brush size up again and i say i don't want any of that selected okay and you can go back and you could do the reverse now we could have started with the blue as well with Lady Liberty and instead of selecting her we select actually the blue and that would actually save us a step in the long run so now I've got her all selected let's go ahead and minus this selection in here oh it's not gonna let me do that so I'll have to clean that up with the polygonal lasso I'll show you what that's all about let's switch back over to the plus sign get that selected really quick here and add this in there and boom we're pretty good there all right, so I've got everything selected at this point. Now, she is selected. The sky is not. The sky is what I want to get rid of, though. So I'm going to inverse my selection. I go up to the top, and I click on Select, Inverse, and now the sky is selected. All right, now it's going to go ahead and delete it right out of there and put a transparency in there. I can click Delete on the keyboard, and we can see it takes away all the blue background. Now, we've got a few areas that we'd have to clean up. Around the spikes, we've got a little bit of stuff to clean up here. And then this big blue area here, which we might be able to just select if we shrink down our brush size. Go like that, select it, and hit delete. Right, all cleaned up. All right, now, if I want to get more particular about some of this stuff, I can start to zoom in. Okay, and go literally pixel by pixel to clean it up, which is a very, you know, tedious but effective way to do it. Or... Once I get zoomed in here, go ahead and shrink my brush down. Let's go ahead and include this in my selection. And let's start fresh here. Deselect everything. And get my quick select tool and just grab this and that. And delete that out of there. There we go. Got a little bit of this up here too. Clean that out. 
and then we can go ahead and zoom back out. So I'm using Command Plus and Command Minus. So if I go Command Minus, it zooms it right back out here. Now, I'd go ahead and continue this process until she's 100% cleaned up here. Okay, now I've got her all by herself. I would want to create another layer that I would use my new layer button for. And, or I can go up to layer at the top and I can go new and layer. There's a number of different ways to do everything on here. And uh, I can drag that layer to the bottom here. And very quickly, just to see how I'm doing with the cleanup job, I can put in a black background, which is going to be very telling. Or a white background even would be even better to show any of the blue that's still left. So I go ahead and I select my background here. Over on the side, I've got my colors. I've got my foreground color, my background color. I'm going to change my foreground color to a white just by clicking on it and then selecting white and clicking OK. And now I'm going to grab my paintbrush. Now paintbrush sometimes is hidden below the gradient tool. So make sure that uh, you find that there. It may be on this one, but we want their paintbrush. Click on that. And now on this particular layer, I'm going to go ahead and select the white background. Oop, I've got uh, something selected on there, which I don't want to have. And there we go. And boom, got a white background. Now. This is just to clean up the picture the rest of the way, make sure all the blue is gone. Okay. If I want, you can see how it's a little jittery around the edges. Um, one way that I can kind of clean that up, and sometimes it enhances the problem, and other times it just kind of fills in the edges to make them look cleaner. I can take my Lady Liberty image here, and I can uh, duplicate her. So I'm going to go ahead, and I can right-click on the layer, go Duplicate Layer. That's one way to do it, and click OK. And by adding that on, you can see a slight difference on the edges here. It makes them a little bit more defined, not as fuzzy, which cleans up the image. Um, like I said, sometimes that works really well to clean it up, and other times it just enhances the problem. In this case, it actually makes it look a little bit cleaner. Okay? Before I would do this process, though, I would have cleaned up all the edges and all that to make sure. Now, I could grab another thing altogether, a different background drag it in here so that we've got Lady Liberty maybe behind some post-apocalyptic uh, landscape or something like that. And then we could start, uh, you know, moving pieces of Lady, Lady Liberty off of her and, you know, stuff like that and making it look like she's been broken, um, like uh, Independence Day or something like that. All right. Excellent. Um, this gives you a good first look at this uh, particular tool. Um, that's our first um, tutorial for Red Hawk Media. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again.